Hello, humans. So, phaser is driven by what are called scenes. Scenes are groupings of related components in your game. So, for example, a loading scene, a menu scene, a lobby scene, and a gameplay scene. What I'm describing sort of sounds like states of your game, but they're much more powerful than that. So, for example, in your game scene, you can have a user interface scene and a minimap scene. If you go to the examples under the scenes folder in multi demo, there's a play game file, and in that file, you can see what scenes are capable of. So, this pop up window is a scene, this space invaders pop up window is a scene. All of these are scenes. They're draggable, they run in parallel, they can transmit data to each other, they can have intercourse with each other, and by that I mean they can spawn children. And yeah. Alright, so scenes sound great. How does one go about making one? Well, wonder no longer. We're going to open up our tutorial folder. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a constant object. And that will just keep track of the keys of scenes and sprites because they need, they, they, they expect a key. So exports, const, cst, and these will just store the keys. So load, it's just going to be load, and menu is just going to be menu. So inside our source folder, we're going to create another folder called scenes. And in that folder, we're going to create our scenes. So a load scene and a menu scene. All right, so now in our load scene, we're going to export class load scene extends phaser dot scene. So we're not getting autocomplete. And that's because you need to open the file that has the that imported the typings, or you can open this the typings folder itself. I mean the typings file itself, and it should work. I don't know, it's really weird. And now we're gonna make a constructor. Super. Alright, so the our scene requires a name, so that would be the key. And we're just going to use our defined constants. So import CST from there. And we're just going to make it. Yeah, so it's just going to reference the string. And the same for our menu scene. It's just going to be this exact same code except we're just going to change this to menu and this to menu there so what we're gonna do is just show how scenes transition and the next video is gonna actually implement a loading scene with the loading bars and a menu scene with all the buttons so all the loading scene is going to do is load all the assets and then transfer over control to the menu scene. So by default, all scenes need a create method. If you don't have a create method, then it's not. It's just going to blow up. And all the others are optional. The other is being init and preload and update. But we don't need an update for the load scene. All right, so what we're just going to do is just give control over to the menu scene. So this dot scene dot start, and we're just going to give the key, the name of the scene, which we have in our constants. So this is just going to transfer over control to the menu scene. And this also needs the create method. Again, the create method is the only mandatory thing needed for a scene. The rest are just optional. And if you want to communicate between scenes, pass data, then you just put a parameter. So we're just going to put hello from load scene. And here is where the data gets passed in. So console.log data. 
can I got it all right so now all we need to do is go to our main where we instantiated our game and in the game configuration object it takes a scene property and it can be array and here we're just going to import the load scene and the menu scene imports load scene from load scene menu scene all right so we're just going to load the menu scene, the load scene first, and then the menu scene. All right, so now when we bundle it up with parcel, it should work fine. It should be up on 1234, localhost. So come on. All right, so localhost. And in our console.log, we should see the hello from load scene, and I got it from the menu scene. So the load scene is just transferring control to the menu scene. If you want to launch scenes in parallel, all you do is this dot scene dot launch, and then the key of the string, the key of the scene, and yeah, that should not close the scene after it starts the menu scene. All right, so what if you want to launch a scene dynamically, like add a scene dynamically? Well, you would do this dot scene dot add, and then the name of the scene, the key of the scene, and then the scene itself. So we're going to need to import that. And it automatically imported it. I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. And the next value is the auto start. And we're just going to set it to false because this will start it itself. And that means that we can remove this and everything should work the same. Yeah. I'm just going to reset everything back because I don't really need the menu to be dynamic. It's your choice though. Whatever floats your boat. And test if it's this working still. Yeah. All right. So how scene flows is that we're going to start here and then it's going to go to the init function. And in the init function is where you can instantiate plugins and you can receive data from other scenes to set up the current scene, for example. And then it's going to go to the preload function. And in the preload is where you're going to load all your assets, your sprites, your audio, really whatever you need to do before your create function hits. And in that is where you're going to make your game objects. And then after that is the update loop, which runs at 60 frames per second, e.g. 16 milliseconds per frame. And by default, Phaser installs 14 plugins, seven of them are core, and the other seven are default, which you can remove. So the core plugins you shouldn't remove, and they are the event emitter, the 2D camera manager, the game object factory and creator, the scene plugin, and the display and update list. And the seven default plugins that you can remove freely is the 3D camera manager, the clock, the data manager plugin, the input, the loader, tween, and the lights. Alright, so that's enough for this video, and I will cover all the plugins as we incrementally build our game, and when they're needed, but if you can't wait and you're curious, you can always refer to the examples and the docs. And for scenes, I've barely really scratched the surface, so again, you can refer to the docs and the examples if this video didn't suit your use case. Anyways, we thank you for joining Channel Jest for a behind-the-scenes look of Phaser. Back to you, Rich.